Do you ever feel like you're prioritizing productivity over pleasure? Do you ever feel like you're focusing on getting more done and showing up and working in that very powerful but sometimes really intense masculine energy rather than dropping into your femininity, into that creativity, into that flow? Because if you answered yes to that question, I want to let you know you're not alone. The Mind Spo Podcast. What do you see with your mind's eye? Welcome back. Let's elevate. Roll your shoulders up and back. Unclench your jaw. Elongate your spine as you take a deep breath in. And now, exhale. Now take your mind to that person, place, or thing that you have gratitude for and start to feel into the joy available to you at all times. Elevate into a higher vibration as we expand together and dive into this conversation. Welcome to the Mindspoke Podcast. My name is Rochelle Fox. I am your host, and I want to start today's podcast with a question. And the question is, do you ever feel like you're prioritizing productivity over pleasure? I've really been calling myself out where I've been focusing on productivity over pleasure. And specifically, I've been experiencing this with one of my businesses that I run with my partner, Chris Soul. So if you're new here, I'm just going to give you the, the mini update on like my life and my relationship and my businesses. So Mindspo is a podcast, but we're also a retreats company. We have Mindspo Retreats. We have an app that has been called Manifesty app. We also have courses under the arm of Mindspo. Then we have my own personal brand, Rochelle Fox. And then we have, I guess, the sub magnetic brand that's coming out with my book and everything that's going to come with that, speaking events and everything, which will fall under the Mindspo umbrella. But Chris Sol is my partner that I've been with for now for, gosh, how bad is it that I don't know exactly how many years we've been together? I think it's 13 or 14 now. I'm not the most sentimental person with like anniversaries and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, wow. That I just, I'm feeling weird that I don't know that. But we've been together like 13, 14 years, like a really long time. And not only is he my like my lover and my partner and, and my fiance, but he's my business partner. And I know for my American listeners, when I say partner, you usually think that it's a female female relationship or a male male relationship because for some reason, partner in the States means something different. But when I say partner, I just mean like my lover, my best friend, my fiance, my business partner. It's just what I've always called him. He's always just been my partner. But yeah, we run all these different businesses together, like I said. And one of the things is that ever since we started running our businesses, I don't think we ever really had very clear cut conversations about leadership. And looking back, it's something that we really could have done and we should have done, but we've just been going with the flow and letting things unfold. And we've definitely seen eye to eye on so many different things and we've created so much magic together. But over the past year, as I focus more on my book and then now coming out of the book cocoon and starting to pour in all of this inspiration, all of these ideas that I've had from spending a year just studying and now wanting to apply all of them and upgrade all of our offerings with all of this new energy that I have inside of me. I've been you know, so excited and pitching to Soul all these different ideas. And we were really meeting a bit of a roadblock with each other. I was so in this flow and creativity and in these intuitive urges where I was like, we have to do this. I can see this. This is how it has to be. And Chris was just in his logical mind, in very much his masculine, thinking about things in a more structured and honestly more of a business-minded way where I was full in my delusion, my visionary mindset of what I wanted to do and everything that I wanted to create and how we were going to change everything. And it was so interesting because I found myself when this first started happening that I stopped allowing that creative expression and that delusional, beautiful, visionary energy that is so powerful. That is the thing that has made all of our businesses, really. I'm definitely in our partnership. I'm the one that has these big ideas and Sol is the one that's always been there as my structure to help me implement them and to help bring them to fruition. We've worked so well together as a team. That is very much our energy. And it was so funny because I 
I went out of this creativity, out of this feminine flow that I was in, and I went into my masculine. And I, I tried to see it from his point of view. And I even tried to really suppress all of these urges and all of this creativity and just really get into that productivity. Okay, I'm going to look at the numbers. I'm going to think about it the way you're thinking about it. And in doing that, I found myself so stifled and I got really angry. And we were like beating her heads at a few things. And one day I just turned around to Chris and I was like, you know what, babe? I'm decided something. (laughs) I've simply decided something. Are you ready to unlock the secret to manifesting? Introducing Magnetic, my debut book that reveals the hidden keys to attracting health, wealth, love, and limitless abundance into your life. Now look, as a Mindspo listener, you already know the power of conscious creation. And now with this book, it is time to take your manifestation powers to the next level by unlocking the secrets of your subconscious mind. Now for a limited time only, when you pre-order Magnetic, you'll also receive exclusive access to the Magnetic Portal, a sacred space where manifestation meets community. Inside the portal, you'll also discover my secret magnetic podcast series featuring deep dive teachings I have never shared before, revolutionary EFT ceremonies designed to reprogram your subconscious for abundance, guided meditations to amplify your manifestation powers, and exclusive bonuses only available to those who pre-order to accelerate your spiritual journey. These bonuses are only available for a limited time. So click the link below to pre-order Magnetic and unlock instant access to the Magnetic Portal and join my growing community of conscious creators just like you already creating their dream lives. I was like, can we call a business meeting? I think we were both like just jumped out of the shower and we're in our towels. But we sat down and we had this business meeting and I told him, I said, you are going to be the CEO of Mindspo Retreats and everything that we do there because he has really been the mastermind of creating the structure of our retreats and helped us be able to scale them now where we're running like multiple retreats a year with other facilitators. So I was like, you're going to be the CEO of Mindspo Retreats and I'm going to be the CEO of the app. And in that moment, Chris just looked at me and he goes, okay, all right, sounds good. And I was like, okay, but that means I'm going to make all the decisions for the app. And he's okay. And then, I, and then I went even further and I was like, that means I'm going to need our developer's phone number and I'm booking a meeting with him as soon as possible to sit down and talk to him about all of the changes that I'm going to make and we're just going to do them. I don't, doesn't matter how much they're going to cost. Like we just simply have to do them. And Chris is like, okay, <laughs> we've made like a lot of changes over the years to the app. And sometimes Saul's like very resisting. He's like, Rochelle, you need to stop changing the app and you need to just focus on customer acquisition, which is very true. But I'm very much focused on creating that app to be the most incredible product it can be. And it was so interesting to me because after that conversation I had with Chris, it really made me think about how sometimes as a woman living I would say, in a man's world and sometimes working like a man if I'm not careful, if I'm not mindful about it, how sometimes I can just focus on productivity and structure and thinking so much in my masculine rather than allowing myself to tap in to my pleasure centers, to get into my creative flow and to allow my intuition to run wild. And it's insane because ever since I made this decision for the app, there has been the most incredible things that have happened. I have been so productive (laughs) because I'm just focusing on pleasure rather than making choices and trying to be really productive with all the things that I'm doing and being in this very structured, methodical, strategic kind of energy that I've been in before when creating things. I have completely stepped out of that and I've just been so in my flow and in my feminine and in my creativity and I've just been sitting down and downloading ideas and writing out scripts and then sitting here and recording new content for the app that's coming out soon. And it's all just been so effortless. And I've managed to get done in a few days what would have taken a week if I was just focusing on being productive. But the minute I stepped into the pleasure of it all, the minute I decided to just let it flow, it just flew out of me and at lightning speed. And I didn't have to think about it and analyze it. And it just was all so perfect and so on on point first take. By the way, when I'm what I'm talking about here actually is something that's coming to the app, which is EFT. This is one of the big, big updates that I wanted to put in the app. I started studying EFT over a year ago and practicing it myself now for the last year. 
And it has been a tool that has completely transformed my life. And it has been, I think, the next step that I needed past meditation after spending 10 years of my life really working with meditation and visualization and mindset work. I've just been so deep into the somatic side of things over the last year. And incorporating those two things together has just, oh, it has shifted so much. And I knew after studying EFT and doing the trainings that I've done, and I, I've got more trainings booked on EFT, which is so exciting because I just want to keep learning more and more and more about this incredible tool so I can just keep improving my teaching skills and my own self-practice because it's been so powerful. And I was filming all these EFT videos, like I said, and it was just incredible to me how the shift in my energy, the shift in my focus, the decision to be fully in my feminine and not work like a man, it changed the whole energy of not only the videos, but the whole energy of how I I felt about the work. And I really just want to connect with you today and ask you, like, where in your life are you choosing maybe to show up in your masculine? And look, we all have masculine and feminine. It's not like a gendered thing. And often, I think even at the beginning of this podcast, I'm making it out like a gendered thing because I think men are quite often really in their masculine when it comes to work. And I think the masculine is probably the energy that most of us are in a a lot of the time because we have been living in such a masculine orientated world with such masculine structures. But it's something that I I challenge you to ask yourself, like where in your life do you feel that you've been in this masculine energy when you really could be tapping into your feminine? And where are you choosing productivity over pleasure? Where are you trying to do things in a certain kind of way when maybe there's another way that you could do them? Where can you allow yourself more flow, more creativity, more intuition, more just juiciness in the creation of something rather than looking at things through such a structured and really condensed lens? I find it so interesting. Sometimes I feel we we get so fixated on how other people do things, how other people show up. What's that person's system? What's that person's secret? And I really just think sometimes we need to get out of trying to find how everyone else is doing things and instead ask ourselves, like, how does it feel for us to do things in a way that feels good for us? How would it feel for you to just follow your intuition and what your gut is telling you and to actually just express that and show show up in the essence of that. I'm really learning more and more that you have to do things your way. And the way that person works and does things might work for them, but it might not work for you. And something else to think about is if you just follow how someone else is doing something, then you're probably going to get something very similar to what they're doing, especially if you're like mimicking their path or you're just like following their directions and you're kind of going copy paste. What they are trying to create and produce might be very different from what you're trying to create and produce. Going back to my example with Sol and the app, Sol's vision of the app is very different from my vision of the app. And now he really sees my vision and he's so about it. And he was making decisions based on a lot of very logical things that make a lot of sense from his point of view. But for me, the app was started, it was a download that I had in 2020. I had this idea in 2020 when the world was shutting down and we were in this giant house. Gosh, if you don't know my backstory with this. In 2020, I was in this giant house in the jungle. We had this house called the Mindsway Mansion that we used to run retreats in. And we paid two years up front for this house and we couldn't run retreats. So we were stuck in this giant mansion in the middle of nowhere, like in paradise while like the world was shutting down and this pandemic was going on. And that was when the idea for Manifesty came. And I I downloaded the whole idea. I, I was very clear on what I wanted. And I was all this like just intuitive urge. And that has been like so many of our businesses, like literally all of our businesses have come from intuitive creative urge that I have had in my head. And when I think about the vision of all of these things, some of them I feel a lot of intuition about. Other ones I'm I'm like, oh yeah, I've done my piece here. I've, for example, the retreats, I feel like I've I have urges and creativity for like a new retreat concept I want to create or something. But a lot of the other things, I feel like my urges for them are gone in the sense of I don't, it's not that I don't care about them, but it's that the urge was there. I created the thing and now it's just sustaining the urge. And I have people and systems and stuff in place to continue that vision that I created. But when it's like a new vision, I have to have full control. (laughs) 
<laughs> Otherwise, I just feel like my creativity is stifled and I have to allow myself to be in that feminine, delusional, flow, chaotic, it doesn't have to make sense, logically stay in order to produce the best work and in order to bring the things that are in my mind into fruition. And that doesn't mean that I don't need masculine energy or masculine structure because I really do for all of these businesses, but it's that creative, feminine, just like flowy urge that allows me to actually create the vision. So to bring it full circle, really ponder on this question that I asked you at the beginning of this podcast. Where in your life are you prioritizing productivity over pleasure? Where can you create more space? Where can you create more safety for you to be in your feminine? I really do feel like for a lot of women, it is more of an automatic thing to be in our masculine energy. And I have found that through just working with so many women on retreats and connecting with just so many women around the world that are doing this work that being in the masculine is kind of like where most people are on their baseline. And when we are in this masculine energy so much, it ends up being our default and it can really cut us off from the the magic of our feminine and the intuitive downloads that can come from allowing ourselves to be in that feminine energy and the magic that can come from that space. So take this as your sign to invite yourself and give yourself permission to step in to that feminine energy, to be more in your pleasure, to choose the path to do something that is maybe more pleasuresome, that might take a little longer, that might be a little left field rather than always going for that structured, productive way. And when I remind myself of this and when I really do lean into my feminine more, I find that I'm just like a lot more recharged. I'm a lot more relaxed and I'm really living one of my dreams, which is to be the embodiment of a relaxed woman. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to be a relaxed woman. I am a relaxed woman. That is one of the things that I'm calling in and one of my intentions. I I want to just be at peace and, and just enjoy life and to, to, to have fun and to make things and to create things. I don't want to burn myself out in the process. And I, I definitely have in the past and I've pushed things too hard. And it's really easy, I think, sometimes to push ourselves to exhaustion and to not realize when we need to rest. So questions like this can be really powerful and frames like this can be really powerful just to remind us of the, just of the magic of being in our feminine energy. Anyway, that's it for today's podcast. And if you're curious about what's happening with the app, then keep an eye out on the at Mindspo Instagram and my Instagram as well, at Rochelle underscore Fox. You might have noticed hint, hint, during this podcast, I kept calling it the app. Well, the app's name currently is Manifesty app, but it will not be Manifesty app in the future. We're doing a rebrand and a change and an upgrade, and it has all been intuitively downloaded from my chaotic, feminine, beautiful energy, and I cannot wait for you to experience it. And I'm so excited about the EFT videos that are coming. It's very exciting, and I'm going to stop talking about it, stop spilling the beans. You're just going to have to wait and see. If you're an app user, you will still be an app user. Things will just get better and upgraded and just so much more is coming than what is already there. So I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for joining me for this episode. You can discover more from Mindspo on Instagram and TikTok by following at Mindspo and myself at Rochelle underscore Fox. If this episode inspired you, then please pass it on and share the love. And if you're new to our world and you want to elevate your mind and step into your best self, then be sure to download our app Manifesty from the App Store and take advantage of the free trial. With Manifesty, you can create your own vision board movies, practice powerful meditations, and set affirmation reminders so your phone supports your journey towards that abundant vision of your future. And lastly, always remember, you create your own reality. So go and make some magic. Thank you.